Hey folks, hope you are doing well. I am Karan Bandal from Econocyte. And in this video, let's talk about the progress India has made on financial inclusion over the last decade. Up until 2014, a very few Indians had bank accounts. So financial inclusion was low. This began to change in a material way after the launch of Prime Minister's Jandhan scheme in August 2014. Jandhan stands for People's Wealth. The primary goal of the scheme is to ensure access to financial services such as banking, deposits, remittances, credit, insurance, pensions, etc. Particularly for the unbanked sections of the society. So before Jandhan accounts were launched in 2014, about 350 million bank accounts existed in India. This number included the multiple bank accounts held by the same individual, meaning the number of unique bank accounts was even lower. In other words, more than half of the Indian households lacked access to formal bank accounts back then. Most of this unbanked population resided in rural India. They held their savings in cash, stored at home, vulnerable to loss and theft. And because they lacked access to banks, they also lacked access to formal credit. In case of emergencies, they had to approach predatory lenders to borrow money. But here's how things have changed in the last 10 years. Over 530 million individuals who never imagined they would enter a bank now have bank accounts. These accounts are all part of the Jandan scheme. Outside of this scheme, the well-to-do people continue to open formal bank accounts. Put these two together and India now has roughly 1.2 billion unique bank accounts. This covers around 85% of the Indian population, bringing all these individuals into the formal banking sector. For a massive nation of 1.4 billion with just $2,500 in GDP per capita, 85% formal financial coverage is quite a feat and should be celebrated. On top of that, Jandan bank accounts have enabled seamless transfer of welfare funds to the end beneficiary without leakages. There are many central welfare schemes which have been made more impactful due to the direct transfers into Jandan bank accounts. In the last 10 years, over $450 billion worth of welfare funds has been handed over to the beneficiaries through direct transfers. There was no middleman in this process, thus no corruption, no loss of funds. Also, the end users of these accounts are getting comfortable using them, as evident by the fact that over $27 billion worth of deposits are parked in these Jandan bank accounts. Moreover, the progress on financial inclusion is broad-based. Over 65% of the Jandan accounts are either in rural or semi-urban areas. The scheme has had a positive impact on women empowerment as well. Almost 300 million women have been brought into the banking system through this initiative. One final positive aspect of the scheme that I'll comment on is the role of Jandan accounts in JAM Trinity, J-A-M. Aadhaar, a biometric identification of an Indian citizen, identifies the right individual. Jandan account provides the bank account in which money or benefit can be sent to and mobile enables digital transactions using which an individual can pay for goods and services or accept payment. All three are crucial for effective governance especially as it relates to public welfare. This Jam Trinity has also ensured a stunning digital payments revolution in India. Over 40% of real-time digital transactions in the world happen in India. I've talked about this in a recent video that I'll link below. In summary, not that long ago, a majority of India was out of the formal banking sector. That meant a scope for corruption in welfare spending and exploitation of the poor by predatory lenders. Jandhan scheme though has succeeded in eliminating this curse to a large extent over the last decade. Thus financial inclusion has improved substantially. With basics now covered, we need to move Indians up the financial value chain. I hope you found this analysis interesting. I'll speak with you again next week. Until then, Take care.